right, let's head over to Gary Nelson. He is live at the Dade EOC, the Emergency Operations Center. Gary, what can you tell us about those new shelters that opened up? Well, uh, a short while ago, Miami-Dade County announced that 13 additional uh, public evacuation shelters have been opened. It's uh, very important for you to go to cbsmiami.com. Uh, they will have a link there that will show you all of the shelters that are open and will also show you the shelters that you may have made note of earlier that are now full and are accepting no new evacuees. So that's the word on uh, public shelters at this point. And if you're going to go to one, you need to go to one uh, today, uh, this evening. You don't want to wait until tomorrow uh, when the weather begins to deteriorate. Now, now here at the Miami-Dade Emergency Operations Center, uh, virtually every agency or organization that has anything to do with disasters, getting ready for them, dealing with them in the aftermath, uh, are represented, including utilities, key among them, Florida Power and Light, which brings us to a rumor you may have heard out there, one that apparently began when a media outlet uh, here in South Florida reported that Florida Power and Light is going to be powering things down, turning power off in advance of the arrival of uh, Hurricane Irma, wherever she in fact uh, ends up arriving. Joining me now live is Florida Power and Lights, uh, Marie Berto. Marie, what about this uh, report that now has fueled these rumors that we're fielding questions about that uh, FPL is going to be turning the lights off before the storm gets here? Gary, FPL has one of the smartest, strongest grids in the country. We're going to keep operating that grid before the storm, during the storm, and it is, and throughout, throughout. So it's it's not it's not true. Um, we are going to continue operating until the storm no longer permits us to do so, and then we're going to restore power as soon as it's safe to do so. We're going to be out there around the clock to get our customers reconnected. Now, you say you're going to supply power until the storm no longer permits you to do so. Now, does that mean at the point where your people have to leave your facilities no. or at the point where the storm blows the poles down? No. And it, it means that we're going to be, we're not shutting down power plants. Um, we have lots of natural, clean gas power plants. We have, a, we have some that generate power for our customers here in South Florida. And we don't turn those off. We continue to generate power during the storm. Now, if we have any damage to a plant, it's prioritized. It's the first thing that we fix if we have any damage to the plant. Um, but we're going to be doing that as soon as it's safe to do so. We'll be repairing the plants. Um, we do so in, in an order of our plants and facilities, and then we do it. We restore power for hospitals and emergency centers, 911 centers. Then we prioritize uh, major thoroughfares like gas stations, um, and then the largest amount of customers. Mm -hmm. So that it's, it's a proven method that we use to be able to get all the most customers back on as soon as possible. However, we work around the clock and we don't stop until the very last customer is reconnected. Okay, so uh, FPL is not going to turn the power off until the storm knocks the power out. If. The nuclear power plant, <laughs> if, yes, please, from your lips to God's ear. Uh, um, it, it, the nuclear power plants, Turkey uh, Point, uh, right to down the road from us. What's the status there? Now, we do turn off the nuclear plants. We do so in an abundance of caution and also due to federal regulations. So those will be shut down in advance of hurricane force winds, and then they'll be inspected, thoroughly inspected, before we power them up again. And in the interim, you'll still have abundant power uh, uh, to supply the, the the South Florida communities. Absolutely. And, all right. And uh, your uh, president and CEO talked about it uh, on our air today, uh, and in a news conference uh, upstate today. Um, we've got to be ready for the possibility 
that this could be an extended outage depending on just how strong Irma is and just where she hits? Right. I mean, right now it, it's a guesstimate, right? Um, but it is a powerful storm. And when we restore power for customers, we do so in a matter of days. However, if we are rebuilding our electric grid, that, that could take weeks. So. Either way, we need to be prepared to be out of power for weeks. We hope for the best, but we need to prepare for the worst. All right. Thank you, Marie Berteau thank with you. Florida Power and Light. And uh, we hope that it might be uh, without power for, for just a few days. We hope it won't be weeks, certainly not months. But uh, you just never know what nature is going to come rolling uh, up at you with. For now, we're live at the Miami-Dade Emergency Operations Center. Gary Nelson, CBS 4 News. Gary, real quick, can I ask you one question quickly? Is FPNL sure. pre-positioning pre positioning crews so they are at the ready once power goes out and they need those crews to respond? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, Florida Power and Light, uh, and Marie will correct me probably if I'm wrong, uh, Florida Power and Light has some 11,000 restoration workers positioned across the state of Florida in some 20 staging areas. Uh, these guys are their, their, their trucks, their rigs, all of their gear. Uh, they have encampments, some 20 of them, positioned uh, in uh, all around uh, across the state of Florida, some 11,000 restoration workers. And the moment that it is safe for them to get out and uh, go to work uh, restoring power, FPL says they will.